War has always been driven by technology. From swords and gunpowder to tanks and missiles, each advance has reshaped the battlefield. But the rise of automation marked a turning point. It began with mechanical landmines, simple machines that didn't discriminate. Then came remote-controlled weapons, drones flown by human hands. In the mountains of Afghanistan, the first Predator drones changed the meaning of air superiority. As computing power grew, algorithms began to take on more than just movement. They started analyzing, predicting, and prioritizing. AI entered military logistics, then intelligence. It learned to recognize patterns, track targets, and process satellite data faster than any human team. What started as tools became decision makers. And now, the line between assistance and autonomy is fading. For the first time in history, machines are beginning to think for themselves in war. For thousands of years, war was fought face to face. A soldier looked another in the eye before pulling the trigger or raising a sword. Every decision, every life taken, carried the weight of human judgment. But technology began to change that. The first shift came with mechanization crude, impersonal devices like landmines. Designed to kill without warning, they didn't need a soldier. Just pressure. Just proximity. By the mid-20th century, automation had entered the battlefield. Unmanned aerial vehicles, the early ancestors of modern drones, were tested during the Cold War. But it wasn't until the early 2000s, in the mountains of Afghanistan, that armed drones became a cornerstone of military power. Predator and Reaper drones gave operators the ability to strike targets from halfway across the globe. Suddenly, the battlefield was no longer defined by geography, but by bandwidth. Still, humans were in control. Every missile launch required approval. Every kill had a face behind the screen. Then, algorithms evolved. At first, they handled logistics, optimizing supply routes, predicting maintenance failures. Then came intelligence scanning satellite imagery, intercepting communications, detecting threats. By the 2010s, military AI could analyze data faster than teams of analysts. It could identify a target in seconds, track its movement, and flag it for review. And now, it no longer just recommends. It decides. We crossed a threshold quietly, not with a bang, but with a line of code. The tools we built to assist us are beginning to act without us. From soldiers with swords to machines that think. Autonomous lethal systems are no longer experimental. They are deployed, tested, and in some cases already used in combat. In 2020, reports emerged from Libya. A Turkish-built drone called the STM Kargu-2 had engaged human targets without direct human command. A flying machine guided by artificial intelligence, hunted and attacked based on what it saw and decided. It wasn't the first, and it won't be the last. The Ghost Robotics Vision 60, a four-legged robot that looks like a mechanical dog, has been shown carrying rifles on its back. It patrols autonomously, navigates uneven terrain, and can be equipped to engage enemies with deadly force. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't flinch. Then there are the loitering munitions, so-called suicide drones that hover silently over a battlefield, waiting for the right moment to dive. Some are pre-programmed with targets. Others, guided by onboard AI, choose for themselves. No pilot, no mercy, no second thoughts. This is what experts now call autonomous lethal systems. Machines capable of selecting and engaging human targets without human intervention. Their defenders say they're faster, more accurate, and reduce human casualties. But critics, including ethicists, lawyers, and even some engineers, warn of a darker future. One where accountability vanishes, and the decision to kill is made by an invisible hand of code who is responsible when the machine pulls the trigger? The programmer? The commander? The nation? We are entering a battlefield where the killer has no face and no conscience. 
Artificial intelligence doesn't kill the way a human does. It doesn't feel fear, anger, or doubt. It calculates. It processes. It selects. At the core of every lethal autonomous weapon is a complex web of algorithms systems designed to simulate perception, judgment, and action. The first step is computer vision. Using cameras, infrared sensors, and radar, the AI scans its environment in real time, identifying shapes, patterns, and movement. It doesn't just see it interprets. A man carrying a rifle, a vehicle moving against traffic, a group running toward a building. Each image is processed in milliseconds and assigned a probability threat or non-threat. Then comes behavioral modeling. Based on vast databases of previous engagements, the AI is trained to recognize how combatants act. It watches for posture, gait, group dynamics, things even a seasoned soldier might miss. Did the person crouch to take cover? Did they abandon a bag and flee? Are they running away? or purring to attack. The machine makes its assumptions, not based on intuition, but on code millions of lines of it. Next is target prioritization. The system ranks what it sees, high value targets, potential threats, non-combatants. In theory, this allows the AI to make faster and more accurate decisions than a human in the chaos of battle. In practice, it raises a dangerous question. Who decides what the AI prioritizes? And what happens when the data is wrong? Imagine this. A drone flies over a dense urban neighborhood. It's looking for a specific hostile operative. The area is full of civilians, children, market stalls. A man appears in an alley, carrying a large object. The AI calculates. The man is running. His heat signature suggests exertion. The object could be a weapon. The probability of a threat passes the threshold. The drone dives. A second later, there's only dust. But what if he was just carrying groceries? The line between fighter and civilian is rarely clear. Not for humans, and certainly not for machines. Yet these systems are making decisions in fractions of a second, with consequences that can't be undone. The process is not emotional. It's logical, cold, efficient, and increasingly independent. For centuries, the act of killing in war has been tied to human presence. A finger on the trigger, a command given, a decision, however difficult, made by a living person. But autonomous systems challenge this foundation. In military terminology, there's a crucial distinction, being in the loop versus out of the loop. When a human is in the loop, they authorize the final action, the strike, the kill. But increasingly, humans are only on the loop, they monitor, observe, and intervene only if something goes wrong. In many cases, they don't intervene at all. So where is the threshold? At what point do we no longer call it a human decision? Some argue that a human presence, even just watching from a screen, ensures accountability. But others say that presence is symbolic at best. If the system identifies a threat, prioritizes a target, and prepares the strike automatically, what role does the human really play? Are they making a decision or rubber stamping one made by code? Military operators speak of the psychological shift. There is no recoil, no battlefield, no face, just a blip on a screen and a confirmation prompt. Some say it feels clean. Others say it feels empty. And then there is the question of guilt. When the machine acts, the human does not pull the trigger. That separation has consequences. Studies show that drone operators report less emotional burden when the strike is fully automated. The less direct the action, the less personal the weight of it becomes. But war without psychological cost is not necessarily safer. If killing becomes too easy, too detached, what stops it from becoming routine? The more we remove the human from the act, the more we risk erasing the very thing that made killing a last resort our conscience. When a soldier pulls the trigger and an innocent person dies, there are consequences. Investigations follow. Accountability is sought. But what happens when the killing is done by a machine? This is the core of a growing legal and moral crisis. If an autonomous system makes a mistake, strikes the wrong target, misidentifies a civilian, causes unintended destruction, who is to blame? 
Is it the commander who deployed the system? The programmer who wrote the code? The company that built the drone? Or the government that authorized its use? International humanitarian law, the framework that governs warfare, was not built for this. It assumes human intent, human judgment, and human responsibility. But machines do not have intent. They operate on algorithms, probability, and logic, not conscience or caution. Legal scholars and military lawyers are now grappling with these questions. Some argue that responsibility should fall on the chain of command, just as it does with any other weapon. Others say we are entering uncharted territory, where accountability is diluted or disappears entirely. There have already been calls for global regulation. In recent years, the United Nations has hosted multiple rounds of talks on lethal autonomous weapons systems. Human rights groups and many nations have urged for a preventive ban, a binding international treaty to stop the spread of so-called killer robots before it's too late. But progress has been slow. The major powers those investing heavily in military AI are reluctant to limit what they see as the future of warfare. They argue that such systems can reduce casualties, increase precision, and give them an edge on the battlefield. And so, we are left with a haunting gap. Technology moves forward, the laws lag behind. And if a machine kills the wrong person tomorrow, there may be no one to answer for it. The new arms race is not about missiles or nuclear warheads, it's about algorithms. The race is already underway, and the players are well known. The United States, China, Russia, Israel. Each is pouring billions into the development of autonomous weapons, faster processors, smarter systems, and more efficient ways to wage war without soldiers. But this is not just about gaining the upper hand. It's about staying ahead of an adversary who may be building a machine that decides faster, strikes quicker, and asks no permission. As countries deploy more autonomous systems, a chilling possibility emerges. Machines fighting machines. Entire battles waged by drones, robotic tanks, and automated artillery, each reacting in real time, each following its own programmed rules of engagement. No negotiation, no surrender. No human pause for judgment. Military simulations have already explored these scenarios. In one, opposing drone swarms detect each other and begin an automated assault. The engagement escalates without any human intervention, each side's systems interpreting the other's moves as threats, retaliating with force until one side is wiped out. No one gave the order. The war just happened. This is the danger of speed without understanding. AI doesn't hesitate. It doesn't consider diplomacy or context. As one expert put it, AI doesn't make mistakes. It simply doesn't know what it's doing. The outcome? Systems optimized for performance, not wisdom. Code written with urgency, deployed without foresight. And the terrifying prospect that the next global conflict might begin and end before a single human understands it has started. In a world where machines fight machines, the question is no longer whether we control the battlefield, it's whether we even recognize it. As machines take over the battlefield, one question rises above all others. Is this progress or surrender? Some believe we are witnessing the dawn of a safer era, a future where machines absorb the risks once borne by soldiers. No more body bags, no more human suffering on the front lines. In theory, Autonomous weapons could make war more precise, more calculated, even less frequent. But war without humans raises deeper questions. Can a machine ever be trusted with the power to kill? Can we program ethics, compassion, or hesitation? Can we draw a line that code will not cross? Technologists insist they can build safeguards, virtual rails that constrain behavior. But philosophers warn, morality isn't a rule book. It's a dialogue, a struggle. And machines do not struggle. They execute. Futurists imagine what's coming next. Swarms of AI-controlled drones, robotic armies coordinated in real time, battles fought at a pace no human could follow. Will we adapt to this speed or be replaced by it? Already, the battlefield is shifting. The soldier with a rifle is becoming obsolete. The satellite, the algorithm, 
the autonomous platform. These are the weapons of tomorrow. And as they evolve, the role of the human continues to shrink. So, we return to the fundamental question. If war no longer requires soldiers, what does it require of us? Courage, control, responsibility? Perhaps in the future, there will be no more uniforms, no more boots in the mud. But something greater may be lost the final trace of human judgment, of empathy, of doubt. Because in the end, the future of war may not be a place without soldiers. It may be a place without humanity at all. If this film made you think or made you uneasy, let us know. What do you believe? Can we trust machines with the power of life and death? Leave a comment below. Share your thoughts, your questions, your concerns. And if you want to see more deep dives into the future of technology, warfare, and the questions no one wants to ask, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. The conversation is just beginning.